um, and you can do the same exact thing to treat them with. If I'm simply treating them, I just use sodium chloride because it's cheaper and because I'm looking just for the chloride so it doesn't matter. That makes sense. And some fish are sensitive to, to potassium where they're not to sodium, so I, it's a little safer treatment. Okay. Um, when you're traveling with fish, make sure they have plenty of oxygen. Get them home as fast as you can. Make sure you don't trash them around. Keep them in the dark. Don't put them on your dash in the clear plastic bag because they stress out from all kinds of visual stresses. Fish are always getting eaten. They're entire, I mean, if, if you could stick your head under the water and there's fish in there, all you're going to hear is, oh, shit. Yeah. I mean, that's all they get to do. They always are running away from yeah. some other bigger fish that's going to eat them. Yeah, yeah. So they are very wary. And when they're starting sights and sounds and everything going on, they get stressed out because they're right on the edge of death or they think they are. Mm -hmm. So it helps to fold them up in a black plastic bag and that's how you carry them. Okay. Um, and temperature and pH changes need to be very gradual. So when you get fish home from wherever it is you buy them, I float the bag and open yes. it up so they get some oxygen and the temperatures will start to, ne to neutralize. After about 10 minutes or so, I start splashing water from my system into the tank, right? Or take a cup and pour it in. And if you have time, let that transaction happen for an hour or two. The slower you get it to change, unless the water's toxic and old and stinking and they need to get out of there, then I might rush it along. But, but the, more, the closer you can change, you're, you're changing the water chemistry by taking some of your system water and putting it in their environment a little bit at a time. And it lets them adjust to that different pH. Some fish, like bluegill, I've taken from a system from right here, going to right there, same temperature exactly, but pH was probably a little bit different. And I scooped one up here, I'm going to have it over there. It hits the water and it heart attack, dead. And the pH changed instantly. And we're not talking even a whole point of pH difference. Wow. Like seven and a half to seven. Wow. Dead. Okay? Paku, we talked about the fish called Paku. It's just as sensitive about temperature changes. You bring it home at 78 degree water and you have 74 degree water and you take it out here and put it there, dead. Okay? Some fish don't care. Tilapia, you can, you can stomp on them, throw them in there, and they'll heal. <laughs> they really do. They can take a they point can take and a half, a beating. and they can take at least 10 degrees. At least. That's, this, that's the kind of safe. At least. A point and a half kills most fish. I've, I've, they can also take Shuttle radical switch. pH extremes if done slowly. I've had my pH go down to 4. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And, and, and tilapia were still swimming. And then, swimming. of course, you came in the next day panicking and raised it real quick. No, didn't no? do that. Well, I did that. <laughs> By the way, that's a good point. I did that. <laughs> you want to have slow fluctuations. So time, sometimes it's better to have something outside of ideal and slowly bring it in than it is to say, oh, oh panic. it's poor. All my fish are going to die. Let's throw in some, God, some making powder. surely die. Exactly. <laughs> I always tell people, plants and fish would prefer the pH just be dead wrong. Then fluctuate. Yeah. This yeah. is very stressful. This yeah. it's like you or I. I can adjust. Give me time. Do this and I go crazy. Yeah. Um I wanna see that uh tumbler. Alright, let's let's file through. I'm gonna describe it and then I'm gonna